how the heck did this happen? <laughs> Merci beaucoup pour tout. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. Good morning internet! It is 10 past 7 in the morning and welcome back to the channel. Welcome here in... cannot even remember the name. Small village in Togo. I have quite a long day ahead of me. So let's see how I'll get on. I want to ride about 350 kilometers all the way to the north of Togo because there is, uh, I think, quite an interesting area. And from there, I want to cross into Benin. But uh, I won't be able to do everything today. So it will take me two days of riding. And this first stretch, this is, uh, well, as you can see, unpaved. But it's only like eight kilometers until uh, Badu. And I think the whole way north it's all paved. I'm gonna stick to the main road. I don't really know any, or I didn't really find any off-road routes or other interesting places to uh, visit. So I decided to just stick to the main road and uh, make it north today. So that is the plan. That is the plan. I don't know if there's also going to be mountains there. I really do not know. It's not easy with three people on one bike. You see, I plotted here on my GPS, you see uh, 400 k's for today. But I, I think I'll stop a little earlier, around 3.50, but yeah, uh, let's just see how today will go. My breakfast consisted of three bananas, <laughs> so I definitely got my uh, banana shot for today. the town where I came through in the last video. The last video I came from the right here. Now I'm gonna go straight. Ooh. That was a head-on collision. There's a truck laying on its side, completely off the road. There, look at that. Oof. Unbelievable. The next accident. It's insane. How the heck did this happen? Front of the 
collision. I mean, if you see how they drive here, I got driven off the road three times now that I'd had to escape in the shoulder because a truck would just drive on the wrong side of the road to overtake someone. And as a motorcyclist, you do not have the right <laughs> off the road here. Another broken truck. Look how high they load them. It's insane. Some more broken trucks. Broken truck. And a truck broken down. And an overloaded truck. truck is broken down like this. <laughs> it's blocking almost the entire road. Yeah. I am now in Cara. I'm gonna call it a day. I'm gonna look for a hotel here. I have ridden five, no, six hours straight. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Now well, today I don't have to ride so far anymore. 120 k's. Including the border crossing. That's a nice motorcycle transport. <laughs> Leaving the asphalt. The last bit to the border. Well, I guess it's all dirt. I'm at the border, I think. Passport done. Stamped out of Togo. I just need to find customs now, as always. Yeah, I've done so many border crossings by now, but sometimes, I don't know, I still find it fascinating how it goes. Like, getting stamped out of Togo, they, I mean, they don't really have offices here. So, basically, he had a table underneath a tree, <laughs> and he had to get the stamps out of his car. I don't know. I mean, usually people here in, from neighboring countries, they can pass the border more or less freely. So it's only really foreigners, I suppose, that need all the paperwork. They had one customer today, and that was me. <laughs> okay, ah, here maybe. Bonjour. Ça va? <laughs> Nice guy. 
now uh, been inside. That's it. There already the sign is well, bienvenue au Benin. And uh, oof. I believe in Benin it's the same money as here in Togo, the Sefa again. So that's nice. I have money. And uh, Benin has an e visa. It's the easiest visa so far. I applied yesterday. And uh, I got it like after one minute of applying, I got it in my email. So that was absolutely brilliant. They have amazing houses in this area. I'm already seeing a few of them here and there. I don't know if you've spotted them already. I'll go and look for them uh, this afternoon in Benin. But I already see them here as well. Here's one on the right. I don't know if you can see that. I think. Or not. Ah, bonjour. Is Duan? Duan? No. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? Hmm? How are How? How are you? How are you? Good. How are you? Fine. What do you want? I need uh, immigration and customs. Where are you going to? To... I'm entering Benin. Benin. Yes. So after this place, where are you going to? To Bukombe. Alright, I'm following this guy. He's going to show me where immigration is because... I don't know, I have a feeling I, I bypassed it or something. I'm not sure. But he's gonna show me. Okay, got my stamp in my passport. was it I can say it welcome to Benin the next country okay there was one really strange thing though just here I think this immigration office is also the police station so I didn't I didn't film inside but you had the there was a desk where the immigration officer was very nice guy but then just behind him, there was a prison cell with a prisoner only in his underwear and the, the cell was empty, there was nothing, no chair, no bed, only a bottle of water and this guy behind bars. So yeah, that was definitely a first. Looks a bit like Guinea. Bonjour. Hmm? I go to um, guest house. Uh, auberge. Auberge, uh, le, le, si, yeah. Le yeah. Ah, okay, c'est c'est là. Oui. Uh, ici? No, ici. Ah, oui, c'est couche couche couche. Et c'est quoi comme ça? Uh, Otamari. Otamari. Oui. Yeah. C'est plat là. Okay. Plaque. Yeah. Bon. Yeah, gauche. Oui. Okay. 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 D'accord. Merci. <laughs> Cow fight. Don't fight, guys. Be nice. Be nice. Ch -ch 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 -ch.
So I found a place to stay for tonight. Um, I'll show you the place later, it's really cool. But um, I asked the girl who works here um, if I can eat something here. But there's no restaurant or anything. But now we're walking. I'm not entirely sure where, where we're going to. Um, So we went to a place where they normally serve food, but they're not serving anything today. So I didn't really have another option. There was like one little shop uh, that I went to, but I didn't really have a lot of food. So now I bought all of these mangoes and then I got some cookies, biscuits, <laughs> two packets of biscuits and then some peanuts. So this will have to last me for lunch and dinner. But I'm sure it'll be fine. Let me quickly show you my room. So I'm now on the second level. This is where I'm staying tonight. See, so I have my bed here and then, well, there's no running water. So they put uh, buckets here so I can have a bucket shower. So I'm gonna have some mangoes and then I'm gonna see if I can explore a bit more around here. I have found a guide who's gonna show me around some of the houses. I think his name is Mpo Mpozo. Mpozo, I think his name is. I quickly go downstairs. Me, uh, my name is Mpo Jul. Mpo Jul. Oui. Mpo is a name, traditional name. Ah, traditional and Jul name. is a surname. Okay. Uh, Nice to meet you. I speak a little, <laughs> little English. Yeah, it's very good. If you finish uh, to the take a cicatrice, scarification, scarification, yeah, uh, you take the this sleeve, the sleeve, for my, uh, visage. put it on your face. Voila. Ah, yes. to, so it heals. Uh, yes. Ah. Yes. So the majority of the people here in Benin, and I also actually saw many in Togo, they will have scarification. And so they have different scars, scar markings on the face mostly. Some will also have it on the arms, uh, tummy and back. But the face is done uh, at, when they're still children. So between the age of three to five, they will make the markings on the face. And then with those leaves and with a special butter that they make, they will put it on the wounds so they will heal. And then when the people reach adulthood, then they'll get other markings, uh, scar markings on the arms, for example. And the scar markings originally were there to indicate from which tribe you are. So they were kind of like a method of identification, really. And nowadays, of course, that's not really necessary anymore for that purpose, but it's still being practiced until today. So I already saw uh, young people as well with the markings. and. I've seen many different markings already. I've seen people with three like big scars across the cheek, for example. Now he has like a different pattern. Can I show? Yes, no. Okay. So you can see here, he has markings here and then stripes here, but they're all very subtle and small. And then ooh, also across, across two, your nose. Three, two years. Huh? Two years. When you were two years, they put it. Yeah, that's really young. So his markings are really subtle, so I've seen different um, sizes of the scars as well. So what is the name of your tribe? Otamari. Otamari. Yeah. Ah, okay, same Ota like Otamari. the... Okay, yeah. so he belongs to the Otamari people, and so they will all have the same markings on the face. Otamari is uh -huh. a singular. A oh, singular? Oui. A plural, beta marie. Ah, beta marie Be is, plural. is a plural. Oui, plural. Beta Marie. Okay. Beta Maribe. Beta Maribe. Okay. okay, that's plural. Aha. Uh -huh. Speak Dita Mari. That's the language. Dita Marie. Dita Marie. Dita Marie. Dita Marie. Dita Marie. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. Oh wow. Welcome to the Bao Bao Elo. <laughs> Is this the hollow yes. baobab tree? Bao Bao Elo. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. Is 
is that um, voodoo? Uh, mm, no. Oui, it is voodoo. Yeah, yeah. Did that have a free divinity? Voodoo. Ah, uh, three gods. Three gods. Okay. One god is protesting uh, homes. Second, go to agriculture. Okay, for agriculture. for the agriculture. And feeding, uh, go, uh, chicken and uh, Guinea food. Ah, okay, okay, mm. food. Welcome to ta Tata Soma. Okay. Right. The entry hall. Uh, Tata Soma. Yes. Uh, if uh, the father have free woman, one woman, the second free, to go to plant the maize. Ah, okay. okay. This is the kitchen. Oh, the kitchen. Okay, I see. Kitchen. Ah. Right. So there's three women we working free, free at women the same the time. Right. Oh. If uh, you go to Anta, to now, yeah. to brother, ah. to Sylvia. You can close the door. Go to Sylvia. Yeah. I okay. see. If you finish, you go to the wow. Close. Yeah. Safe. Safe. <laughs> okay. Okay. The sleeping quarters are yeah. upstairs. Yes, this year it is uh, cooking. Ah, also for cooking. For cooking yes, yeah, yeah. it's uh, yeah, yeah. beans. It's cooked. Ah, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I hear chickens also. <laughs> oh, there's chickens there. So now we go to the top. Voilà. Guinea fowl. Oh, those are guinea fowl. Guinea fowl, chicken. Ah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, those are guinea mm. fowl voilà. chicks. Voilà, voilà, voilà. Yeah, 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 I see. So, ah, so this is for sleeping. Oui, sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. Really? Oh, in. Ah, you must scroll in. Ah. Oh, there's somebody <laughs> sleeping. I don't know who you are. It's okay. <laughs> somebody is sleeping there. <laughs> no problem. Another. Another. Mm -hmm. Go okay. to see, go to see. No, Good, thank you. So this is how the traditional houses look like. So downstairs is mainly where the animals stay in the nighttime, and there's also the kitchen area. And then the people sleep here on top. Um, and that's been done so because of security. So in the past, you know, the animals would be safe from predators and the people would also be safe from invaders or other tribes or yeah, anyone trying to disturb. In the dry season, they'll use this as a kitchen, so they're cooking outside. And then in the rainy season, they'll use the kitchen downstairs because it's inside. This year to cooking. What is this? To to cooking. Also for cooking. Uh, ah, yeah. Second season. Ah, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Watch my head. This year, we have two tata. Ah, okay. I also like how they're all decorated on the outside. See? They made like little... See, they made like patterns to decorate the outside. What what is it? 
I thought they were beans, but no. Nere, nere. Nere. I never seen that before. And then you you cook it, or how do you eat it? You take the the okay. the cereal. Uh huh. You cook. Cook that. You cook that. Uh huh. If you finish, you cook that. You full second, full stop, full. Right. I'm not entirely sure about that food, what it is or how you eat it, but it looks very fascinating because I thought it was beans, but it's not. I've never seen anything like that before. Wow. Now that is amazing. What a view. This is <laughs> toilet. <laughs> I am back at the guest house and now that you've seen some of the traditional Tata Somba houses you can see that the place I'm staying is kind of based on that but then enlarged but the idea remains the same and so the traditional tata house was really built as a defense mechanism so that both the animals and the people are safe so the people here live in the middle of their fields instead of all together in uh, gathered in villages and that custom is seen as a reflection of their fierce individuality and the people here fended off Dahomey slave hunters, which I will tell you more about in the next episode. But also that this is how they fend off the advance of Islam and Christianity. So when I entered the first house, well actually all the houses I saw it, they'll have voodoo signs uh, above the door and on the sides. And so voodoo is a religion and it, I think it originates from here. And about 20% of the people in Benin have voodoo as their religion. So eventually Islam and Christianity also made it to Benin. But in this part, uh, they still adhere to the traditional uh, religions. Uh, I will not go too far into voodoo and everything that's around it. Um, I wasn't planning to really seek it, uh, but now, yeah, today I encountered it. And um, yeah, it's the religion that is, um, that is over here. Anyway, there's a couple of things that I find really, really fascinating, which is that you'll see the traditional houses. Some of the houses, the traditional ones, are about 150 years old. and But there's also modern houses right next to it. And uh, he told me that the traditional houses are a lot of work to build. So it will take them about four months to build a traditional Tata Sumba house. Whereas the traditional, the modern houses are easier and quicker to build. But he said still the people consider the traditional houses to be better than the modern houses. I think in terms of also how the houses stay cool and it's very well thought out. Um, and it's one of the most fascinating types of houses I've ever seen. Um, and then of course the scarification. I already saw it in Togo as well. But I don't think it's hard to capture on camera because sometimes, I mean, here it's so subtle that you have to be really close to a person to actually see it. But I already saw people in Togo as well, especially also in the border area, the people of Togo and Benin, they're, they're very related. So they're pretty much the same people, but then on the other side of the border. So on the Togo side today, I also saw these Tata Somba houses, a few of them. And then again here on this side. So it's a very fascinating area. So I'm, I'm happy that I came all the way to the north because from now I'm going to be riding all the way down to the south of Benin again, which is again another three, four, yeah, probably over 400 kilometers to go back down south. But it was really worth it. I thought it was fascinating. That was it for today. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below and then I'll see you in the next video.